Hi everybody, Sunny Bonani, welcome to my channel. Kamala Munda and Omleja. And on this channel, say I am I'm a reality shows A to Alam Zanzu versus Zala Sokulumanga Ola Masho. See, I've been dagging for it. See, Kulumanga Ola celebrities guy and our YouTubers A to Alam Zanzu. If it's your first time joining me today and you really like my content, do not forget to press the subscribe button. Langa Zanzu, guy and the notification bell goes up. Peru Solo Munda is among our most famous Omosha. Sesi Wufagi. Like and jalo ke guys if you want to be a member of this channel if you look below there's a join button it's very easy to join as a member and very cheap as well okay there's also a thanks button if you want to give money to the channel and thank you so much to every single person that watches adverts on this uh, channel okay and there's a there's a banner one that comes at the bottom okay that one is not even there's no reason to skip it because you can watch me while the advert is displaying okay <laughs> so thank you so much for supporting the channel in that way today you guys i am going to do the review the full review of ofuze uh, this is episode three and you guys i'm still enjoying the show i don't know how you guys are feeling about the show those who are watching the show people have been asking for full episodes i do not uh post full episodes uh on this channel because i do not want to deal with copyright issues and also this channel is about the reviews okay there are other channels that post episodes you can look on youtube and there's many channels on many uh, pages on facebook that post the episodes otherwise you guys if you're able to to pay for dstv you can get it on 161 not even uh the other package you know the the basic one with 161 you can get the episode on thursday eight o'clock those who have um uh, channel 103 it's on friday at half past seven that very same episode repeats the following week on thursday in channel 161 okay so remember last week in episode two it ended we don't all be driving back home because they needed to have a conversation with her husband her husband was indicating that he had spoken to his father uh with regards to the unveiling and they had uh, they have a conversation or they have things to talk about between the two of them to sort of finalize what was going on so when Udombi turns around because she said she was going to i think meet with her friend so she turns around to go address things at home of course the uh, family issues are more important so she has some kind of like sense of agency so she's going there ready for this conversation that is going to finalize things as far as the unveiling is concerned but when she gets home her husband is all relaxed and she's like why <laughs> so the way that he was so relaxed she was feeling like oh i could have gone and done what i was uh, about to do and then come back because on the phone it sounded like it's urgent for them to talk right now but then when she's there it's like not really it could have waited Anyway, you guys, so that they, they start talking about uh, the unveiling. We already know what Andombi's uh, issue is. Uh, just the fact that it, it seems like the Mzolo family want to do more traditional things when it comes to the unveiling, uh, things that she doesn't necessarily believe in. And more than that, she, is, she feels like she has an issue with the fact that things are being forced on her. You know, there's no negotiations. There's no compromise in any way. As we know that, you know, the Ngobo family, they are Christians, born again Christians, I believe. So it's very hard to reconcile their beliefs at, at points, okay? But she makes a very good points because she says that uh, when her husband says, okay, no, everything will be done, done uh, according to how, what the tradition requires and their father will be the one his father actually would be the one that would lead the whole process of the unveiling as far as tradition is concerned okay now don't be like listen when did we get married you know and they got married in two, uh, 2009 so she says we got married in 2009 and nothing has ever been done with the two of us being married traditionally so the uh, uh my, the assumption i made or the understanding that i got from that was that they got married uh the western way you know maybe they went to the church and they had what we call white wedding but they never did anything traditionally for her to be welcomed to the family so she's trying to make that point we've been married in 2009 even us 
our union has nothing has ever been done traditionally uh, to recognize it so why now are we now uh, starting to do is into traditionally I felt like you guys really that was a, 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 a good point that she was making because if really they got married uh, the Western way and Agaz, I, I, maybe Ayogwaba and Atelo Nyongo and all of that, I mean, it's reasonable for her to assume that in their marriage or in their home, they don't follow any uh, traditional uh, roots or, or routines. <laughs> you know because they've never done it even in their union so now she's not understanding why they want to do now okay this is the answer that really puzzled me and i think that honestly oh um zolo was not being uh, honest about it he says that no but you were welcomed in my family she's like i was welcoming your family when she's like yeah we did uh the traditional thing <laughs> i'm like ha you know how do you, hey guys i don't know those who are complaining that i sometimes i speak in is zulu i don't know what is in english <laughs> you listen those with higher grade english you know they will write in the comment section what it means so i am like how do they do did they bluetooth the nyongo to <laughs> Did they Bluetooth in Yongo Tsundombi? Because Tsundombi is like, I was never there. He's like, yeah, you were not there, but we did it. I'm like, eh? <laughs> it just didn't make sense, you guys. I really am getting the feeling that uh, Umzolo himself doesn't understand isn't those my traditions and all of that. But maybe he is having a feeling that a lot of the things that have happened to them and even the parting of their children is maybe because they, they haven't followed certain things traditionally that they're supposed to follow. So he is feeling the pressure of, or he's just feeling like maybe they need to do those things and but he doesn't know much about it anyway you know and that's the reason he has left it like that with their marriage that they've never done that Udobi has never been to his home and he's traditionally welcome to the home he didn't they didn't do it because they didn't believe in it now he's feeling like he wants to do those things but instead of him saying listen i feel like maybe there is things that we should be doing here and maybe that's the reason why things are going this way in our lives but i don't know anything about it too he is pretending as if he understands what's going on or what is supposed to be done but his answer when it came to Untobi being welcome to the family traditionally made me feel like I know I was with Gwenzigani Lan you know so I really feel like honestly maybe he needs to be honest with that to say would say this is why I want uh, this done because I'm just feeling like we need to do some of these things but I don't understand what is going on so we will uh, uh, leave it to my father to actually lead us in terms of what is going to happen uh, with Untombi you guys I'm not understanding when when she was asking that question I was not understanding whether she is also saying that uh, maybe they need to do the traditional welcoming of her to the family maybe she's also feeling like that's why things are going the way that they're going because they didn't do that which would be a little bit confusing for me because of course there are these Christians that do not follow those kinds of things and but I mean I sometimes like when things are going a certain way in your life you question things you know you question things have we done things the right way uh, maybe that's what is affecting our children maybe we need to have a, a, a look at things but i really would have loved um, a conversation where i feel like they were totally being honest about why uh, it's such a conflict right now in their marriage why it's happening now at their marriage but honestly it, the 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 the, uh, the telling of the nyongo when the person hotel on nyongo is not there <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was really funny. I thought it was funny that he said they did it in his family without her being there. Maybe they did do a traditional msebenzi, but I don't think that it was the welcoming of Umakotu. Umwelkama anja Umakotu when she's not there. It just didn't um, make sense, okay? So they conclude that at the end, you know, Untom was saying in the diary session, listen, I just want to be happy. I think she said it in the conversation, actually. I just want to be happy at this point. And I'm, I'm all done emotionally. I'm cried out. I want to 
I want everything that needs to happen to happen so that I can move on with my life and be happy. And uh, Umzolo just says, listen, it's just going to be a remembrance of, you know, the kids. And um, uh, yes, and then Undombi just said that, you know what, as long as everything is beautiful for the event, uh, uh, she's okay with that. And, you know, Umzolo also gets, you know, uh, emotional about it and he was crying about it. Guys, I mean, uh, honestly, like losing a child is one thing. Losing two is, it's, it's just another. So I understand how the whole thing is emotional. And also I understand why. Uh, he might feel like he really wants to look at the uh, traditional way of things just to figure out that maybe, maybe they left something out that they were supposed to do because now they do have one child uh, and maybe they even have fears that something might happen to her. I think it's a girl. Uh, they might have fears that something might happen to her and they feel like, you know, they need to fix things. So I feel... Uh, I feel his pain and I feel his desperate, desperation to want to fix whatever it is that he might feel like that it needs to be fixed in order for these things that have happened to them to not happen. But sometimes, guys, it's just life. It really ju is just life. You know, and another one and another one. You know, or no, God doesn't love me or God forgot about me or God doesn't love me or God forgot about me or something like that. But it's just like part of life, things that we really... Uh, I cannot explain you know but yeah it's a, it's a very uh, understandably so it's a very emotional thing for both of them you know having to talk about the passing of the kids uh the unveiling even them trying to reconcile what they both want uh, in terms of the unveiling okay so now <clears throat> Uh, we move on to the uh, next scene, which was Uncle Snati uh, at home with with his mother. Okay, this is this one was a surprise for me because when Ulona uh, Uvi was having a conversation with Uncle Snati, and she said she she spoke about Uncle Snati moving back home. I thought that she was saying that Kosnati had moved back home previously for whatever reasons, and but she didn't mean that he was back at home currently. But in this scene, it, it, it sounded to me like Uncle Snati lives at his parents' home, just in the cottage outside, okay, outside the house. Which made me feel like, why is Uncle Snati home? Because as far as I understand, Uncle Snati is married with a family, and we've seen scenes that were shot in the house that we thought was Kosnat and his wife's house was that scene shot at the cottage okay so i had questions also so good why is Kosnat back home why is because because he's grown he seemed to be a responsible uh, man uh, with a family uh i don't know why he does for a living but i assume that they are all in music and entertainment and all of that i'm just wondering why he's back home because also his parents are not that old that they need somebody there to take care of them also so Uvi is there to take care of their parents. So what is happening here? I was like, what is that? What are you doing in the cottage? Okay. But the way he explains it, it's like he is there because they are renovating the house and he's helping with the renovation. So I was, I was wondering, is he actually laying the brick himself or he is managing the team that is renovating the house or he has a construction company that is the one that is renovating the house? I just wondered what is Gosnasi doing back home? You know, is are there issues between him and his wife? that you know he needed to be back home or oh, they are all there they all the whole family stay there in the cottage okay <laughs> anyway you guys listen I, i'm just wondering because of course it's a reality show we want to understand what's going on but it wouldn't be something that is strange i mean if maybe they were maybe going through some challenges financially they wanted to move they needed to move back home and there's a cottage there for uh, the parents have the cottage and uh, they they can live there as a family until they recover but of course since it's a reality show we would like to know so why isn't cost not to back home okay <laughs> is it a temporary thing or a permanent thing okay so they're talking about a conversation uh that uh, umam go because it's uh, his mother and him because not that they had had with the god remember the brave conversation <laughs> but they don't get into uh, the singing uh, uh and i remember my god was saying to mom go mustn't sing at church anymore <laughs> She must let the kids sing now. She's old. <laughs> well, she didn't say she's old. So, 
Uh, but they get into the conversation where I think they want Ngos Nati to participate more in the church and to officially take on the role of an elder. Listen, for their church, I don't know what an elder is because I thought that Esontoeni, an elder, is uh, an older person that uh, plays that role of an elder, Esontoeni. But you have to be older <laughs> to be an elder, Esontoeni. So I didn't think with Esontoeni, you can just have a young person uh being uh taking a title of an elder i don't understand that but i guess for their church that's what they do so they're talking about the fact that uh my god he had told said he's not ready to be an elder and uh he does say goes listen I, he doesn't feel like he's ready. Also, it's not like he is scared of uh, Umsebenz Ogubai elder. He just feels like he respects Umsebenz Gankulunkulu. He respects the church. He respects God's work. So he, he doesn't want to maybe take on the role and then doesn't take it as seriously as it does. And also, he already participates in church. He feels like it's enough. I also just feel like I don't feel like anybody should be pushed into a commitment like that. You know, every person when it comes to the church must commit as far as they want to commit, you know, and nobody should be pu pushed to commit more than they are willing to. What is the point of that? You know, so if he's not willing to do it right now, uh, then they mustn't push him to do it. So that was basically just uh, the conversation. And then uh, the next scene, it was just a meeting of the uh, siblings, you guys. Those who don't know about the Ngobo family, of course, the father is a singer, the mother is a singer. And the father also, when he is performing, the kids, uh, I don't know if they still do it, I think they still do, uh, are his backup um, dancers. All of the kids are his backup singers. Sometimes even the mom comes. So it's a family affair, okay? Now, uh, the kids, uh, when they were younger, also used to have a group called Amaponi, a very successful uh, group, you guys, but they were very young at the time. Your baby puppy. <laughs> baby papa. But it was nice fun, the group that the uh, uh, younger audience really, really loved. And also just the fact that they were um, Hashel Mklope and Mam Ebony's kids. You know, they traveled the world, like they say. I actually didn't know that they actually even traveled outside uh, South Africa, but they said that they did. They went to Jamaica, they went to Botswana, they mentioned uh, traveling in private jets and all of that. So they really had a successful group, but it was a kids' group. Group, a kids music group they sang like i don't know <laughs> like young um traditional music but that is like relatable to young uh to younger audience so it was a fun group you guys so of that has an idea that they need to possibly bring back the group so they need to come back together so that they could um perform as a group again and so he's getting the siblings together to sort of introduce this idea of them uh, doing um, our performances together. Okay, so they all there. Ntombi is there. V is there. Uh, Chablan is there. They all waiting to hear why why he has called them uh, there. You guys, I think for the most part, really, it looks like the siblings are. Uh, get along i haven't seen any issues if they are maybe we'll see them later on in the season so i don't i don't think that it was difficult to get them together but they do talk about the fact that all of them are quite busy so i guess you could see it's 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 not as easy to get them together but I, I don't think that it's a matter of them not wanting to come together it's just that they are busy with their lives okay so he eventually does talk about the fact that he feels like I'm a pony, I need to come back together. They sort of spend a little bit of time uh, remembering how it was like traveling and all of that. They All of them have positive memories when it comes to I'm a pony. Uh, they feel like they really had a great time, you know, and they were able to go to places without their parents and, uh, and all of that. Now, when he talks about... Uh, them uh sort of re um coming together again to uh perform together or record together and all of that uh, jabu says that he has uh, an issue 
with the if they are going to be relevant now you know especially the type of group that they have and would they be relevant now would people even care about them now you know which is the same thing that um uh, uh, says as well because so that, that is their concern i think honestly that is a valid concern you guys because music is um is so different now uh what kind of music are they going to do and uh, at that time people that really loved them were younger audience but uh, the younger audience that is not so young anymore so now the younger audience now you know are they going to really understand the music if they do the same music that they used to do and those uh, the older audience that used to be young back then <laughs> If they change the kind of music that they do, are they going to understand them now? I, I, I get it. I get their concern. But I also feel like because they are just that family, people might just be interested in whatever it is that they do just because they are that family. So eh, I don't know, you guys. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see if they end up uh, doing uh, coming together as a group any, um, again. Okay? So uh, at some point, Untombi, because they do talk about the fact that it's very hard to get everybody together, especially it's going to be hard to get people there for rehearsals and stuff. And Untombi starts uh, sort of complaining about the fact that V hasn't uh, been um, around as much and all of that. And I wondered if her complaint about that also means that Uvi was not there for her when she's going through what she has been going through with her losing her children if she means that or she just means that she maybe hardly ever shows up when they have you know get togethers and all of that but i did wonder you guys if she has that little bit of resentment to say but you don't you didn't really show up for me i wondered if it's 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 a little bit deeper than just her sister not showing up when they meet as a family or it's more like like I've gone through a lot and you haven't been there for me. Uh, but they don't go into it uh, that deep, okay? And then the next scene, it was the two sisters that are meeting, Uvi, and you know, no, Lokuza, no, Dombi. They're going for massages and, and all of that. I like their relationship, you guys. There is that, uh, 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 like, a little bit of a uh, banter between the two of them, just that sibling thing, you know, <laughs> that you can love your sibling a lot, but they're always going to be times when they irritate you a little bit. <laughs> I think because... Uh, Untombi wanted to talk about boyfriends. Listen, that family believes in marriage so much that it's not just the parents that believe in marriage, even the kids believe in marriage. So even Untombi puts as much pressure on Chabu and um and v to get married just as much as they their parents do you know so she's always asking about boyfriends when it comes to v with what's going on apparently v had a boyfriend that oh actually proper said what's i let boyfriend that can is one in a month <laughs> i don't know why i imagine that that boyfriend had dreadlocks <laughs> <laughs> I think Ufi was dating a Paranyana boy because apparently it's very funny to Tom go to the dead side. Go to, I, boyfriend, I, I he doesn't like water, your boyfriend. <laughs> That's what the father said. So he was, she was just trying to find out, goes, are you still with the guy or not? And Ufi is sort of like, listen, I can't even confirm that right now I'm all about myself. I think Ufi is single and uh not so ready to mingle okay she's ready to mingle with herself okay <laughs> it doesn't sound like to me she's looking for a relationship looking for something serious looking for marriage she's just enjoying herself she's just enjoying being young and single and boy does she look good she looks <laughs> really good so it's like they're putting pressure on her but it's just not working because she's just enjoying her life okay and um yeah she does say that she's going through a phase of self-discovery which totally made sense and i think they should just leave her <laughs> leave her alone to uh, do all the discoveries that she needs to do guys i mean relationships can be a lot they can be a lot and the way that sometimes we act like people have to be in relationships and uh, marriages are even harder and the way that we act like people have to be married sometimes it's like it's marriage is the easiest thing when it's not so i feel like when somebody says listen i i'm not ready i don't want to go there i don't want to do it not right now they should just just let them be okay and they start talking about uh, the fact that untombi has a swing uh, uh, at her house 
the adult swing that's what i mean <laughs> and also has an adult bible you know you have a bible little no maria no jesus and no and then you she has a bible that has a what's the conjugal conabane in garden adam and no eve adam and eve she has a bible that has adam and eve entanglements okay <laughs> Onto, she seems to be somebody that is very liberated when it comes to intimacy okay so and speaks about it freely she wants to organize like a girl's night where they are going to explore and talk about everything have a sex talk and all of that so they talk about uh, that you guys so uh, she says he's gonna call it girls not tonight it was just uh, the two of them out uh, having fun you guys i need to do something like that with my sisters because that was fun to, to actually watch okay and uh, now uh unati is meeting with the parents unati, unati is meeting with the parents and is uh, telling them about the the fact that they did meet as siblings and they talk about i'm uh, uh coming together again is i'm the parents seem to be very excited about that uh, that idea and oh actually shop, shop expresses Uti. he's been trying to tell the kids listen this is where the money is you know <laughs> the group is where the money is and quite honestly uh baba Shalim shop has been in the music industry for a very long time and if he thinks that's where the money is chances are that's where the money is okay they probably should listen to him a little bit okay and the kids haven't thought so i guess because they haven't done anything as a group so uh of course uh the parents are happy about the fact that they want to come back together as a group. But here's an issue that confused me. Because Ungosnati goes on to mention the fact that they are going to uh, hire someone to play the guitar for them. Okay? Which I thought, good. So why are they mentioning the guitar? Because there's a guitar, there's a, I don't know, a keyboard, there's whatever, the drums. There's, uh, you know, the band, there's um, a variety of instruments that are played in, 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 in a band. You know, why the guitar? You know, the, of course, they're going to hire people to do all of those things. Why the guitar? But then I realized that I guess the guitar thing is very important to the family because Obabu actually probably plays the guitar, okay? So he, he, he makes it clear that they've decided that they're going to hire someone that is going to play the guitar for them. Uh, at the beginning, I wondered if it was because they want to make it clear that they do not want their father to be the one that plays the guitar for them. You know, and Obawa was says, uh, it's like he does not understand why none of them have learned to play guitar. I guess if you're a guitar player, you want one of your kids to play guitar. It was such a confusing thing for me. You want one of your kids to play guitar, you know, and even the mother was like, one of them has to learn to play a skin i'm like why is it so important to play skin because like, music is music so but i think for the family it is important but it looks like none of the kids do play a, a guitar and the father doesn't like the fact that none of them do and he says that uh, the hiring someone uh, to play guitar is like buying a car but you don't know how to drive and I'm like, ah, but it's not the same. <laughs> but he just doesn't want them to have someone to play guitar. Maybe they must let their father play for them, you know? <laughs> and yeah, but I mean, I guess they don't want that. Is But there was a conversation that confused me a little bit. I guess we will understand maybe as the uh, season go, why it's so important for him uh, that, you know, one of the kids is able to play a guitar, okay? So the next thing is a funny one because V, of course, is like in the evening or afternoon or whatever. She's ready to go to the gym. Uh, the parents, listen, the Bible is always on the counter or on the, I'm sure every table, every, every, <laughs> every counter has a Bible that, that is open. You know, that is just their family. It, the Bible is always on the counter, open, ready to be read. And, and prayed upon or something so when she's trying to go to the gym the parents are like ah but um so you did not attend the prayer she's like but, but i do read the bible on my own i pray on my own i have quite some on mine they're like no but you still have to join us for a prayer and uv is not understanding because she's like but you guys just prayed right now are we supposed to pray again <laughs> and mama's like yes you need to pray 
that's the thing about living at home. You know, you ready to go to the gym. She actually had to call, I think, the person that they were supposed to go to the gym with to say, listen, hold on here. I still need to convince my parents that I need to go to the gym. I can pray later. <laughs> okay? So it was just that uh, funny thing. But it, it, honestly, in that family, they live by prayer and the Bible. And it's not a bad thing, to be honest, you guys. And uh, And obviously, if you live at home, you have to do the same. That is, that is how they raise their kids. Kutlezi kutanda azwa, kutlezi kufundwa i baibeli, i baibeli selila pa ready. You know? <laughs> the Bible is always on ready. Okay. Uh, so there was uh, just that uh, funny uh, scene. So when he was speaking, when she was speaking on the phone, the person on the other side, because it was a loudspeaker, was a guy. So in the diary session, I think they asked them, uh, was who uh, v speaking to her man? you know uh, on the phone and was like no, she was speaking to a man not her man not to be cool man and daughter not in daughter yeah. <laughs> not in daughter yeah. i wonder how they know that okay but i i guess Pella, as long as it's not like official uh, he's not a man okay and uh the end of the uh, uh episode it was just don't be calling a friend because they need to wrap up uh the planning of the party party or the get together, the girls get together, the naughty nights, and all of that. So she's just speaking on the phone. She's outside her parents' house because she's coming to see her parents. So they're just wrapping up, and I'm guessing that maybe that naughty night we are going to see it next uh, week. Okay. We also did see the preview where uh, Uncle Snatch is trying to call everybody because I believe that they are supposed to meet for a rehearsal, but nobody ha uh, has shown up. So I think that we're going to get a bit of drama there because it seemed like to me Uncle Snat is going to be the one that is a little bit more committed to uh, them coming together than anybody else. So I wonder if everybody is going to be as committed. And also, you guys, I believe that they've shot the show already. So if they had um, uh, made a decision really finally to come together as a group, we probably would have had something by now about them doing things as I'm a pony, I haven't seen anything. Maybe there is something out there, but maybe I just haven't seen it. So, yeah, you guys. But that's all that happened in, in um, this episode. Listen, you guys, this show is very watchable, guys. And the nice thing about it, the whole family can watch it and enjoy it. it. It's a lovely show. It's a lovely show. It really is. Like, they've done it really, really good. Like, it's only been three episodes, and I'm loving it. I like how the producers have done it different, and it's sort of like they've understood the family and what the family is about. I haven't looked if the family has any... Um, if, they, if any of them are uh, working as producers, too, of the show... I suspect maybe Ntombi might be because she's on TV a lot because they seem to have a control on um, how the, the, the family is presented, you know. They are presenting that family very, very well, <laughs> you know. I think that the, the, what's the, that family, the Ranaka family must contact the producers of the because ah, the Ranaka producers are like, ah, the, the way that we, we saw the Ranaka family before they did the reality show and the way that we saw them after they did the reality show, it was like a disaster. We like, right now we think that family is a mess when we didn't think that before. So I think that really honestly for this family so far, they're doing a good job to present them as really like a good family, good family values. It's nice to watch. You get to laugh here and there. So uh, yeah, guys, I like how they've uh, done this show. Okay. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like it before Pumegi on a share it with your friends, with your family, and even with strangers. Ginitanda kakul.